The Daily Code Snippet. Fonferian is actually also a shorthand property, and we will discuss it here for those designers that want greater control over the web typography. It is used to outline all the font variants for a font, including font variant caps, font variant numeric, font variant ligatures, font variant alternates, and font variant East Asian. We will focus on the first three options. It is commonly used to set the font to small caps. Font variant, small hyphen caps. Font variant numeric is used to control the use of alternate glyphs for numbers, fractions, and ordinal markers. Possible values are normal, ordinal, slashed zero, lining nums, old style nums, proportional nums, tabular nums, diagonal fractions, and stacked fractions. Ordinal refers to special markers such as first, second, third, etc. Slash zero forces the use of a zero with a slash for clarity. Lining numbers are when all of the numbers sit on the baseline. When using old style numbers, certain numbers such as three, four, seven, and nine have descenders. With proportional numbers, the figures are not the same size. While with tabular numbers, the figures are all of the same size. With diagonal fractions, the numerator and denominator are made smaller and separated by a slash. However, with stacked fractions, the numerator and denominator are made smaller and stacked separated by a horizontal line. A ligature is when characters are joined into one shape. The use of font variant ligatures controls the presentation of these pairs. The possible values are common ligatures, no common ligatures, discretionary ligatures, no discretionary ligatures, historical ligatures, no historical ligatures, contextual, and no contextual. Common ligatures include character combinations such as fi, ffi, and th. Discretionary ligatures are those specifically designed into a font by the type designer. Historical ligatures are those that have been seen historically, for example, in old books, like the German TZ digraph. Contextual ligatures are when the ligatures adapt to their context or the surrounding letters. Here are some examples. Here's the HTML. We first look at without small caps, then with small caps. Then we'll take a look at the different numbers, starting with normal, ordinal, slash zero, lining nums, old style nums, proportional nums, tabular nums, and diagonal fractions. One thing to note with our HTML is when you look at the statement for the diagonal fractions, you see several characters. Combinations of an ampersand, the number sign, and a three-digit number, and then a semicolon. These are special characters that, in this combination, represent a certain glyph. And in this case, the glyphs represented here are for the fractions one fourth, one half, and three fourths. Then we will go to the ligatures and look at normal. Common ligatures, discretionary ligatures, historical ligatures, and contextual ligatures. And now on to the CSS. One of the issues when using these examples is we have to pick a typeface that supports these、uh, special alternate glyphs. So for looking at small caps, we are actually looking at the typeface. Cardo. For the numbers, we are using a combination of Allegria to look at ordinal, lining nums, old style nums, proportional nums, and tabular nums, and diagonal fractions. While for the slash zero, we are looking at Roboto Mono. We go back to Cardo to review the ligatures. And this is how these would display. So, by using a combination of Allegria and Roboto Mono, we are able to see some differences when looking at the font variants for numerics. We can see a difference between ordinal numbers and normal numbers. We can see that the slash zero in Roboto Mono is more clear than. A zero that would be with Allegria without the slash, that could be mistaken for an O, for example. 
With lining numbers, you see that the numbers sit on a baseline, while with old style numbers, you can see that the numbers, some of them descend below the baseline. There isn't a huge difference that's clear between tabular and proportional numbers for this particular typeface. And when we look at the diagonal fractions, we see one fourth, one half, and three fourths. As we discussed previously with the HTML, we had placed these special characters to represent these fractions. This particular typeface did not seem to have support for stacked fractions, so that's why it isn't in our example. For the ligatures, we are looking at some common combinations of letters that form ligatures. So you can see the FI, FF, TF, FT, and FJ form a single shape. Um, there isn't a huge difference that we're particularly witnessing between these different options. Primarily, again, this has to do with whatever ligatures and glyphs are supported by the particular typeface. So in order to really see the differences between these things, we would need to have a typeface that supports a historical ligature, uh, a typeface where the typographer has built in a specific discre discretionary ligature. And with regards to contextual ligatures, the typographer would have to build in to the design of the typeface that it responds to the surrounding letters. But these are the limitations that you see with web typography. It isn't usually as easy to finesse the typography on the web as it is when doing print graphics because it is necessary for the developers to build in code to simulate some of the things that you see in print in terms of typography onto the web. And it often becomes too complicated to represent. So when moving from typography from print to web, there are some limitations that designers have to consider. Kerning in typography is the process of adjusting the spacing between characters or letter forms in a proportional font so that you have an aesthetically appealing result. It is distinct from tracking that adjusts the spacing over a range of characters. While there are some equivalents to adjust tracking with web typography, traditionally adjusting the kerning in web is difficult. The font kerning CSS property attempts to remedy this failing. It is a relatively recent addition and may have inconsistent browser support. Font kerning will set the use of kerning information that is stored in the font. So it would be limited to whether the web typographer has built in these settings into the font you are using. The possible values for font kerning are auto, normal, and none. Auto determines if font kerning should be used. When type is displayed at a small size, often browsers disable kerning because this may affect readability. Normal means the font kerning information should be used. None means the font kerning information stored in a font is disabled. Let's look at some examples. We have set up three classes for three options, normal kern, kern, and no kern. In the first option, we are looking at normal. In the second option, we are looking at auto. And in the third option, we are looking at none. Here's the CSS. In addition, we have adjusted the CSS so that we are using a particular font family for this example, Zilla Slab. We are presenting Zilla Slab at a much larger size so that we can see the differences in spacing between letter forms. And we have also adjusted the line height. So we see that normal kern is set to normal. With kern, font kerning is set to auto. And with no kern, font kerning is set to none. And this is how it would display. I think difference between normal and auto in our example but you can see when the kerning is turned off or disabled with none, that the spacing between the A and V letter forms is distinct from the previous examples, as well as the spacing between the uppercase T and the lowercase T in the previous examples. And that without the kerning, the spacing appears too wide, 
while with the kerning, the spacing is more pleasing and even. Presented by Designers Learn Code.